Hi everyone and welcome. It's great to be back for our episode 18. I'm Jodie Fielden and I'm joined by my work wife, bestie and business partner, Audrey Varga. During these podcasts, we share with you how you can leverage your passion into profit. Whether you're looking to launch into the next phase, take time away from the floor, or you're looking to sell your business and cash out your investment, you're in the right place because we've just about done it all and we're here to share with you that you can too because it's time to believe your business can be everything you ever wanted. Absolutely. And hello, everyone, and welcome back. And today's episode is going to be very interesting because we will talk about what happens when you find yourself sitting on the fence when it comes to making decisions. We're going to begin unpacking the reasons we sit on the fence and procrastinate or put things off that we know could make a difference. And we do it year after year. And I find making excuses about why it's not the right time. Absolutely. And also we are going to talk about the keys to unlocking the secrets of peerless decision making and also personal empowerment, focusing on the art of overcoming hesitations, which is a common barrier when, uh, that keeps many of us from seizing opportunities for growth and success. For example, uh, if you've been sitting on the fence with changing your prices um, or how many other things do you sit on the fence with? Yes, and and I think really the real questions what we should ask ourselves, is it possible that this is a self-imposed barrier that uh, we have somewhere in our psyche that is not only uh, preventing us from moving forward with uh, this, or but it's probably you know, like preventing us uh, from moving forward with many other things in, in our life. All right, well... Can we start with that, the psychology of hesitation? Because I think we can dive straight into the psychology behind the hesitation and what impacts it has on our business and our personal lives. Yes, absolutely. And uh, that actually reminds me one of uh, Jim Rohn's quote, which is the major key to your better future is you isn't it? Which means, you know, like if you want to see changes or improvement is is your ability to make decisions at the at the right time. I guess hesitation is at the crossroads of decision making you think we all face. But I guess what is it that holds us back? Is it fear and uncertainty or or do you think it's something deeper? I think it's a it's really multi-level and multiple level things because for me uncertainty creates fear. And then, uh, you know, like we can dig uh, much, much deeper in our uh, subconscious programmings, you know, like in our values, belief systems, and also the scenarios, what we come up in our minds, you know, like we are playing playing, uh, so many scenarios when it comes to decision makings. And uh, this is when it comes to really, uh, you know, to playing uh, scenarios which are not the positive scenarios, we, we playing on what if, and we uh, we get caught into these uh, emotions and fears, and then we start to feel overwhelmed. And because we don't see it clearly, then we tend to stay in the same position. And I think uh, again, a Jim Rohn uh, quote: "It's." it would be very, very relevant here, you know, like if you are not willing to risk the unusual, you will have to settle for the ordinary. And this is what we are, we have to face and we have to uh, understand that if we going to sit on that fence, you know, and we are not moving, then what will happen, we have to accept it, that it's nothing going to, uh, to change uh, in our life. Yeah, look, that um, the couple of quotes that you've uh, already mentioned reminds me of my favorite and I kind of want to pop it in here um, and so the first time I heard it I thought it was a bit rude <laughs> um, <laughs> if you always do what you've always done you'll always get what you've always got and that's um, Henry Ford had that line and I guess if we don't want to keep getting what we've always got <laughs> what do we do how do we get past our own blockers uh, I think what we really need to uh, to look at is that, uh, you know, like, what will happen if we don't do it? Like, if you're considering to do something and you are hesitating about it and, you know, like, it can take sometimes years and years of hesitation, which is 
going to be really to think about what kind of price I'm going to pay later for not being able to make a decision right now. And I think it's very, very important for, uh, for us to understand because many times uh, we are sitting on the fence or we are uh, not making decisions, not moving forward right until that point when it's staying in that position is far, far more painful than actually moving out from that position and entering into the unknown or entering into the uncomfortable part. Yeah, I guess um, those fence sitters usually won't get off the fence until the fence begin hurts their backside a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 and and that's true. And you know, like uh, this is when life makes a decision for you, and it's never really a good thing because you know, like if you make a decision on your own, uh, you can navigate change better. If you welcome change, you can navigate change better. I always bring up, you know, this uh, on our coach on coaching sessions when I'm talking about this kind of things with our clients, you know, like if you are about to jump off the cliff, yeah, it's always better if you make that decision for yourself because you can prepare, you know, like you can have a parachute or whatever, you know, like you can jump safely and you can do that in a way which is beneficial for you, then opposite to that when actually life pushes you off that cliff and then you need to learn on your way down, how to, you know, how to uh, make this to work for yourself. And it's exactly the same for business also. I guess so, because if someone pushes you off, you're just all arms and legs everywhere screaming. At least if you've yeah. made the choice, you may still be screaming, but you've got a little bit of control about what you're doing. And you are prepared, um, you know, like you do everything to yeah, to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that you're going to hopefully aim feet first instead of belly flopping. Um, can you talk us through some strategies, like talking about preparing, how do we prepare? Some strategies that you give clients when they're in that moment of indecision, you know, like when they they want to make it, but there's something holding them back and they just don't know how to make the decision. So there's a couple of things you can, uh, you can do. And uh, when it comes to making decisions, you know, like when I know, uh, you know, like, what would be the solution uh, that's already a good thing because you already did your research and you know there is a solution for you but you are hesitant about if that solution is really the solution for you so this is when i do my paper uh, brainstorming when i know what i want to find out and then i divide the uh, that sheet of paper for two parts which is positive and negative and then i think about it so if i step into this new thing what are the positive things and what are the negative things? And once you put everything down onto the paper, it's not that scary anymore because it's out of your head. So you don't have to deal with that really the close emotional feelings like the fears, the limiting beliefs and everything else. Once it's on paper, actually it's in distance from, from your inside and from your emotions it's so much more easier to make a decision based on facts. And obviously if you have, 17 positive and three negatives then it's really quite logical you know that you could benefit from whatever you're trying to make a decision on you know like when it comes to you know like 50 50 or more negative than positive then at least you know that this is possibly not what you need and then you need to get into the research mode so the other thing is uh, what you could do uh, before you find your solution is actually if you are unsure about something uh, then you really need to put that time aside to actually start to um, gathering some informations and gathering some informations from the right places to prepare uh, and not asking random people what would be the solution for uh, your problems it's actually more finding the right platform and the right people who can uh, answer to your questions to actually uh, uh, ask the questions from those people and once you go to the uh, answers again you can go back to the paper and you can say all right so i know the answers positive negative is it the right thing for me to do it right now 
Yeah, it's um, I use that method that um, you said. You told me that a while ago, how to do that method. So I guess once you've made the decision, people say, okay, everyone talks about the decision and it makes their life better and everything transforms. Um, we were talking about a client because we were discussing this topic before we jumped into the podcast that we thought we would talk about this one particular client of yours. Would you like to um, explain and or we'll just tell the story about um, this particular salon owner that we were talking about before we jumped in? Yeah, so this particular salon owner was actually sitting on the fence uh, quiet a long time. Uh, she knew something was uh, wrong with the business because she uh, she had to go to uh, to her husband to ask uh, the husband to invest money into the business in order for her to be able to pay bus or you know pay bills. And after a while, obviously, she realized like. That shouldn't be right because we are working really hard, you know, and we are making some money, but it's still not enough money. So she was sitting on the fence for a while and try, she was trying to figure it out on her own uh, what to do about it. And then she came uh, to ask for help. But when she came to ask for help, she still had so many uh, chit chat in her head that once she got the solution and she decided that she find her solution, uh, she actually uh, stopped and she ghosted us. She ran away, she ghosted us. And that was six months from her life until she went back to the same old, same old because um, all those things that are holding us back to make changes, she went through all that process. So then pandemic happened. And this is when it was staying in the same position were most painful or more painful than coming back and you know, pick up the pieces from where she left. And when she did that, uh, it's actually amazingly a whole transformation started for her. And the transformation started with her mindset and also with her personality and everything else. And once that transformation started, everything else in the environment uh, changed. So that was the business and also that was uh, her leadership and uh, everything else. So that was very, very interesting because then we were talking about once we um, were well into this transition and transformation, she said to me, you know, like, I wish that I would have done this six months ago because if I would have done this six months ago, just look at me or just think about it, you know, like how far would have I come? And that um, first text message that you got from her when um, you changed the prices, was uh, it was her first week that she changed the prices. They had only been open for four days, not um, the usual five. So she was open from Tuesday to Saturday. And it was her biggest week she's ever had in history of owning her business. And not one person complained or um, cancelled their appointment because of the, the price change. Now, um, and it, it wasn't a, a giant one. It, it was very well thought out and strategized with the two of you. And I had a quick look at her numbers um, to refresh my memory before we started talking. And I want to know, do you remember how much difference you made to her bottom line? Now, in saying this, it was only you, this year you started working with her in the April and finished around, well, this the numbers I looked at were until October. So I think you finished in, she finished in November or something. So just from April to October, do you remember? Well, uh, I actually, I need to be honest, I did not remember the exact numbers. And when you shared with me, I was really, really uh, surprised because I thought it took longer than it was. And the numbers were amazing because uh, you shared with me that we started around 5,500 and we, like by October, uh, she made over $15,000. Yeah, no, and guys, that is... Her weekly average, that's not, you know, in the extra amount of time. Her weekly average went from, yeah, $5,500 to over $15,000 per week. 
Um, so I guess that just shows how someone can truly transform once they've decided sitting on the fence is a bit more painful than um, overcoming their fear. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's so true because really um, if you think about it, you know, like how much not be like not being able to make a decision, how much it can actually holding back us from bettering our life, bettering our environment, our business. And I think what I encourage uh, all of us to think about, you know, like just think about how often it happens to you or happens to me or happens to us that we have an opportunity. And the opportunity doesn't need to be like a huge life-changing opportunity. But just think about everyday lives, you know, like little things which would, you know, start little changes in your life. How often it happens that you actually or we don't make any movements because of we are freeze, we are frozen of fear, yeah, or the uncertainty. And uh, just think about it, you know, like, is it beneficial? And how else we could actually look at life instead of, you know, um, once something new shows up in our life, you know, like stepping back and be very, very fearful. Um, what I normally do, and it took for me for a while to, to arrive to this mindset, uh, because I used to really, really uh, be fearful for from any big changes. And when uh, I decided to move to Australia, I had to, <laughs> I had to use to lots of changes because, you know, finalizing and finding the right visa and all those things you know like I remember in the beginning you know like uh, I just wanted to run away and hide away you know from everything just hide under a rock you know and things just will come better but then I realized I actually need to be open-minded welcome and also once I open-minded and welcome then I am in control uh, when you uh, fearful, when you overwhelmed, uh, you are not in control because you don't have enough information to make a decision. But, you know, like something is stopping you to gathering more information. And that's the main part when uh, I think the smallest steps what we can do instead of making a decision right there and right now, you say, all right, so this is an opportunity. I'm not quite sure if it's right for me or not, but let me to find out more. And I think this is the most important, smallest step what you can make for yourself uh, instead of staying there in uncertainty. And I think it's also important to remember not to let people that don't know what they're talking about influence your decision. Um, a lot of the time we have people in our ear telling us that because we're thinking of trying something that they haven't tried before or that they may have heard something about from someone, they're influencing your decision on what's right for you. You need to be able to have a be a, comfortable to take that step and ask the questions from the people that actually have the answers or who have been there and, and experienced it before. Um, so... I guess it's true that, you know, overcoming your hesitation is a journey in itself and each decision you make is a step towards your future, you know, and um, I don't think hesitation should uh, hold you back because I think we, we end up looking back. I was speaking to another client um, yesterday and it was um, I'm still in the same place now that I was last year and I've been thinking about changing my prices all year and I know I should and I've got people waiting on my waiting list but you know I I just I just don't know why I'm not and I guess it's that I don't know why I'm not is the biggest thing that holds everyone back um and it's it's that kind of invisible ghost that's holding you there sitting on the fence yeah, exactly, you know, and, and the thing is, you know, uh, we are the only one who can limit our own uh, future or our own success because um, I know it's very, very easy to say, you know, like your environment and, you know, like it's not possible because of this or that, but that, mis that decision you make in your head that those uh, barriers are true and they are the ones which are stopping you. 
And Jody, you are absolutely right about, you know, uh, to listening to other people's uh, opinion or whatever. Be always open uh, to other people's opinion, but you need to have the strength and the filtering system to understand uh, if that is beneficial for you or not. And uh, even when we giving our advice to someone, it's very important for us to understand that our own limiting beliefs can influence other people's life dramatically. And it's very, very important to become uh, not judgmental and basically distance yourself from emotionally and basically from everything what you would implement in your life uh, and give that really uh, gold uh, which would help that person to move to the next level. Because uh, it's very, very true, you know, like many times we get um, um, get some advice from friends, husband, wife, uh, team members or whatever, and they speak from their experience and from their own limiting beliefs. So, and I'm working on myself, sorry. Sorry, yeah. I was just going to say, um, sorry to cut you off. Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> when, in saying that, Generally, the people that are giving, and this is, for an example, one of our clients a couple of months ago, um, when she was first starting to change her prices and she was a bit scared and she had to do, you know, all the work with the doing the break even and the calculators and everything. Her husband and her mother-in-law were saying, why are you doing this? Like, it's just so much work. You'd be better off working for someone else. You could just make the same money that you're making now. You can work for someone else. And it's really easy for someone in that moment to go, actually, that's the easy choice. I don't mm -hmm. want, to, you know, like I, I, it would be easier just to go and work for someone else. Um, it takes a lot of grit and fortitude that, you know, the small percentage of people have, which she amazingly had, and to push through that when all these people are like telling you to stay back where you are and to actually move forward and then, you know, Six weeks later, when they're seeing the results, they're all, oh, this is amazing. And now they're positive about it. But um, that it, they didn't get on board until they saw the proof coming in. And I think that's really important to realise that um, a lot of the time the people that are telling you not to do something are people that have an employee mindset instead of yeah. a business owner mindset. I think, you know, there, there's that big mindset transition that has to happen as well at the way you look at tasks that you're doing. Because if you're an employee sitting there for an hour doing your break-even budget, that's, you know, why would I do that? Yeah, and, and uh, how you can overcome that, it basically becomes your personal strength, visions, and why, you know. If you really know why you are doing it and if you really have your goal in mind, which for uh, this business owner is very, very strong, like she wanted to do this for a very long time and she decided to actually go for it and now nothing really can stop her. So she got there uh, at the end, but she has very, very strong vision. Uh, we have, uh, she has a very good goal in mind. And she said, you know what, I just focus on what I want and I will ignore uh, everything uh, around me. And don't misunderstand uh, us, you know, like it was very difficult for her. We had to work on her mindset, like we had to stop working on what she wanted because we had to work on the mindset. It was uh, weakening her, but she still had the strength and she said, I need help because this is what I'm dealing with right now. And I have the vision. I don't want to turn back, but I need some help from you guys to actually make sure I'm going to stay right on track. So we uh, spent uh, two sessions with her uh, to uh, basically working through all those uh, fears, limiting beliefs and everything else. And now she's back on track. Yeah, she's doing amazing. So if you think that you've been sitting on the fence, um, especially if, around pricing, uh, we've mentioned it a lot because at the moment we're really focusing on um, our pricing nexus and helping people make more money without having to have more clients and getting their business foundations right. 
So if you'd like to join us on the retreat, you are more than welcome to reach out to us. If you have questions about, oh, look, I don't think the retreat's right for me. What other options have I got? Um, or you want to have a session with Adriana and just talk about your own limiting beliefs and, you know, what you can do for your next move.